All right, welcome to Drill Down Earnings. We have the latest quarterly results from Salesforce. This is the business story behind one stock on the move. I'm Corey Johnson, the chief market strategist from the Futurum Group. Salesforce Q1 2025 earnings. Why do we care? Giant software company. They got a big, the biggest building west of Chicago, right over my left shoulder. I promise. Right here in San Francisco, I'm in the Ferry Building, one of those beautiful buildings west of anywhere. But anyway, Salesforce Q1 earnings, and they were okay, I guess. Uh, beating expectations, Wall Street likes that, but a beat or a miss. But there's a lot more going on here that Wall Street does not like. Take a look at what exactly that is. So first of all, announcing first quarter results that were uh, in fact for the quarter, not terrible. Um, 9.13 million up 11% in a year-over-year -year basis. Um, operating margins of 19%, that's pretty good. Uh, RPOs, it's the money that customers are going to pay them eventually. Um, uh, and they, the remaining performance obligations up only 10%, so growing more slowly than revenues. The guidance was the real concern about Wall Street. That's why the stock is selling off so very much. Uh, the guidance of uh, $9.225 billion next quarter, that's only 7.5% growth. This company has never not grown at double digits. In fact, it wasn't too long ago, it was growing at 30% year over year. Now they helped that by doing some big acquisitions, we'll talk about that in a minute. But 7% growth is just not what you want to have from a giant growth stock. It's just a giant stock. So the stock's selling off as a result. Now some things getting better, operating margins, 19%, really strong. Interestingly, their service business doing better than their pure sales for sales management business. But I want to uh, uh, call out the diversification of this business. Their gradual diver diversification by adding products, by certainly by adding AI, but also by acquiring Slack, Tableau, MuleSoft, and lots of other little companies has really added to a diversity of revenues. So in particular, you see that data business uh, that represented principally by MuleSoft uh, growing nicely and growing actually better than the rest of the company. Um, when you look at the MuleSoft revenues, they broke it out and said that in the quarter, what was a pure standalone company not too long ago, MuleSoft, growing at 27%. So think about that. The overall business is falling to single digit growth and MuleSoft is accelerating its growth at 27%. I talked to Futurum's analyst, Keith Kirkpatrick about this. He's great. Find him on the Futurum website. Find him on the YouTube page uh, uh, for Futurum because he really knows this stuff. Uh, he said, he, he sent me a Slack message, ironically, saying a uh, MuleSoft strong performance relative to the need to integrate data from wherever it is in the organization, not just Salesforce. In fact, he said that uh, Salesforce execs told him just last week that the majority of their customers hold their data outside of Salesforce, but MuleSoft is helping to pull it all together. Now I want to point out a couple more things. Um, the Salesforce customers are stretching out their deals, 22% of the deals um, uh, of their, of their non-current, of their RPOs are not current. And, and that suggests to me that uh, the short-term payments for their long-term deals are going are growing at a slower rate than the long-term payments for their long-term deals. It's not a worrisome sign necessarily. Some people were concerned about day sales outstanding for this business, uh, and I would say it's probably not something to be concerned about. In fact, you saw them kind of uh, decline back to show their kind of regular seasonality where DSOs fly in the, in the calendar fourth quarter and then come back in over the course of the rest of the year. Looks like we're gonna see that same thing. But again, pointing out that the the non-current RPOs are growing faster than the current RPOs, current in the 12-month RPO. That's not a great thing. But again, guidance the story here. All right, how did the stock react when the numbers came out? Let's take a look at the chart. You see a big sell-off in this stock, down 17% at after hours trading. It's a stock that's up 26% in the year. So you've, you've given up all of the growth for this company. Now you're back at sort of September levels for this company and given up almost a year's worth of growth. But uh, in terms of how the business is progressing and the important things to look at, well, here's what CEO Mark Benioff had to say in the conference call. And we all know the AI transformation is many transformations, the transformation of how we're interacting with software. It's also a transformation of these algorithms or we call these models that the AI is built on. And it's a transformation of the data that's used by whether it's consumers or enterprises to deliver this incredible next level of intelligence. But for enterprises, we know that this customer data and this metadata is really the new gold for these enterprises. And it's a huge driver of growth for our business. We all saw the report from McKinsey, 75% of the value of Gen AI use cases is in the front office. 
And everybody knows Salesforce is the leader in front office software. That's our fundamental premise for our growth going forward, that we're already managing 250 petabytes of data and metadata that's going to be used to generate this incredible level of intelligence and artificial and capability to deliver for our customers a level of productivity and profitability they've just never been able to see before. And at the heart of that is going to be our data cloud. So from uh, from Benioff's mouth to God's ears, we can only hope. We shall see. All right. What does it all mean? What's the drill down earnings takeaway? What's one number you want to know? To summarize all these numbers, what's one number that means a whole lot? We'll have the drill down bite right after this. The Drill Down is brought to you by Futurum Group, where analysts, researchers, advisors, content creators, and marketing experts help business leaders anticipate and understand shifts in their industries and build strategies to leverage disruptive innovation. With deep analysis, Futurum Group's extensive industry experience delivers reliable research and data, thought leadership, and actionable advice to help you with your strategy and go-to-market efforts. Futurum Group. The first quarter results from Salesforce, let's talk about the numbers that you need to know. $9.1 billion in revenues, up 11%, barely double digits. Why do I say that? Because the guidance was worse. The guidance was the real takeaway here of seven to 8%. And indeed, that's the bite. That's the one number that means a whole lot. Well, if they're guiding to 9.225 revenue in the second fiscal quarter of this company, that's just 7% growth. We've never, ever seen single digit growth from Salesforce, but despite all the acquisitions, we're seeing it now. All right, thanks for listening to Drill Down Earnings. I'm Corey Johnson, follow me at X at Corey TV, Instagram and TikTok at Drill Down Pod. A full earnings report and lots of other great stuff uh, on YouTube's uh, uh, Futurum Group page. Drill Down Earnings, part of 6.5 Media.